Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Off Grid Knives Cayman. Uh, another uh, new model for 2021. Uh, this one's sporting a uh, G10, uh, G10 scale steel liner lock. Uh, a D2 steel blade, of course, um, and uh, a very, very thin clip point, aggressive clip point blade. Pretty cool. Um, you'll be able to find this in a link right down in the description. I'll make sure that it's there, and I'll also link Off Grid Knives in general so you can go check out what else they've got going on. Thank you to Off Grid Knives for sending this in for review. Always happy to check out from, uh, something from Off Grid. And thanks so much for my generous patrons. There's a link for Patreon down in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Overall length of the Cayman. Here's the box. All right, alligator. Overall length. Coming in at seven and a half inches, it has a presence of more than that, so it's interesting that it's only seven and a half inches. Uh, blade length, yeah, 3.4 inches. Uh, cutting edge is coming in at about three and an eighth. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and Ontario Rat Model 2. So you can see here, it's a big knife, it's just got more height than anything else. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and Spyderco Para 3, again, Fairly close, only a quarter inch larger than the Spyderco Para 3. It's just a different, it's just a larger design. Um, and then last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. I really need to make t-shirts that say that <laughs> at this point, right? How many times have you heard that? Uh, yeah, similar ergonomic space to the uh, Ritter Hogue. It's just smaller overall with less cutting edge, not by much, and definitely larger than the Mini Griptilian, or I'm sorry, yeah, the Mini Griptilian. Uh, let's go ahead and do carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3. So thickness here you can see just a little bit thicker, the Spyderco Para 3, right? It's more robust, a lot of off-grid knives tend to be a more robust feeling knife or knives, right? Uh, but it's not by much, right? This isn't like the XL Enforcer, which was uh, probably considering when you guys are watching this, the last off-grid knife that I reviewed. So yeah, let's go ahead and do length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. You can see here that Maximum height is probably right here, and it does approach about where the Para 3, I'm looking at my light too. Yeah, it's it's very, very close. So it does have a flipper tip that's a little bit pokey, right? But maximum height is really this area right here, and that's where you're gonna feel it. If you're used to carrying the Para 3, this knife initially feels a lot bigger, and then you hold them side by side, and it's like, yeah, it's not really that much bigger, but it, it does feel a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. You can absolutely get my tools down in the description in that section that talks about the gear that I use on the channel. Uh, it is, uh, the tools that I use are extremely inexpensive and very recommendable. As is the case with most of these, I believe now everything is gonna be T8. We have a T8 pivot. And we have T8 body screws. I say everything except for the pocket clip screws which are gonna be T6, which is fine. Fantastic. Two screws holding in the body pieces, the pivot, and some pocket clip screws. No complaints there. That's exactly the way that I like it. Um, let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. I don't think that's an excessively thick blade. 115 thousandths, 120 thousandths maybe. Yeah, 121, so about 120 thousandths. So there you go. It's a tall blade, so that's going to result in a pretty good cutting edge. We'll talk about that. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Take a look at the inside here real quick. You can get my flashlight down in the description as well. Uh, I believe this does have, yeah, can you see in there? Some internal milling. So that's good because it's a steel liner lock. Weight on this guy, let's see, what's my guess? Uh, 3.75 ounces. Nope, <laughs> weighs more than that. 4.8 ounces, so it's pretty heavy. That's where it differs from the pair of three. Pair of three, over a full ounce lighter. Yeah, is that right? Am I right? Just forgot to look. Yeah, so this is pretty heavy. I mean, for I'm not saying it's 4.7 ounces is not that heavy, but for the cutting edge, for people who are big into ratios, yeah. To me, it's a 4.75 to 4.8 ounce object. It doesn't have an overly cumbersome profile, so I don't mind carrying this, but some people will. Do with that information what you will. 
So, uh, these are not made in the United States. I think you guys know that by now. Um, but uh, yeah, these always exhibit very consistent quality. That's something that I enjoy about off-grid knives is it's not a question as to whether or not it's everything's gonna work correctly. They always feel about the same. Um, in I mean, of course, given the specific design. So we have no double clutch, we've got smooth bearing action, and we have a, a flipper tab that works best as a light switch flipper. You can push button it, but that is quite the sharp beak there. So yeah, probably best is a flipper, but the detent is good. I'll give you guys a look at the detent here real quick. Click, nice and clicky, nice action. Locks out great, right? Ergonomics, fantastic. This, this knife has just enough room for me to get a full four finger grip, but it's perfect. And that's because the pocket clip is not trying to be anything that it doesn't need to be. We have, this is about the right size for this. I mean, it's not overly long, right? It's got a drop and a swoop and a nice spoon bill that comes continuously up, meaning it's going to rise to meet whatever thickness of pocket seam, uh, but it doesn't need to be so long. And the fact that it's shorter means that where you grab it, the little bill that it does have is biting into a spot on at least my hand where it's not bothered at all. This is very, very comfortable. You can get very close to the cutting edge and that jimping extends up to about where I'm gonna wanna put it. This is nice. This is a nice knife to hang on to. It's also very easy to disengage thanks to this cutout here. The designer, the guy who's designing all this stuff, I think really has figured out what's going to work for certain sizes of knives, right? He likes to make knives that are more, I think, for larger hands for outdoor use. But I mean, the XL Enforcer and this are great examples of just, I don't know, his uh, ability to kind of understand how the human hand is going to interact with things, which sounds silly, but it sounds like such a simple thing. But when little changes to the shape of the handle or the overall length of the handle, right? Or the uh, position of the flipper tab. There's, there's all these little things that can change how the ergonomic lines play into everything. I mean, going from flip to disengage to the flipper tab, in this case, interacting with my thumb to uh, putting the blade back into the closed position and then back into the pocket, making sure every last part and line is, you know, creating a an optimal positive experience for the end user. There's a lot that goes into that, even though we are just looking at a simple G10 and steel liner lock. So I appreciate that. It's nice having when I'm going when you're actually going to go to use it. Yeah, it's comfortable. We have a very aggressive clip point blade. We have a flat that carries out to about 50%, maybe 55% the overall length of the blade. Not a lot of thickness here. This area right here, it's pretty robust until you get out to the tip. Oh man. That's a poker, right? Now this is gonna be great for some people and for people who use their knives as a screwdriver, as a pry bar, right? Which you shouldn't be doing. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Uh, but if you do do that, the tip is not super duper robust, right? So it's gonna excel, be very good at puncture tasks and be not so good at the stuff that you wouldn't normally do with a knife. Now, despite the fact that the flat is about 50% the height of the blade, you would think, ah, even at 120 thousandths, that's not a lot of uh, room to drop to the edge. Um, it is still extremely, extremely thin down behind that, uh, behind that edge and has no problem slicing. Um, so we're not gonna be looking at, you know, something like an open L, but is it sharp? Yes, will it slice? Yes, feels good. The edge feels nice and clean, consistent. That's what I expect from off-grid knives. Uh, this is D2, which is fine. Don't have a problem with that. I did mention, you know, considering off-grid knives likes to be, it seems like they really like the 60 to $100 territory with a lot of their less expensive stuff. They do have some more expensive stuff that, you know, hovers around two, 200 to 250, but uh, they enjoy that 60 to $100 territory, usually more that right around the middle of that. I've, I've brought up maybe considering a different steel, one of the steels that's dropping from the, you know, previously appropriate $150 territory down to the sub $100 territory, like 154 CM. So, you know, that would be nice, but I'm, I'm okay with D2, it's, it's fine. D2 is still a good composition. Uh, moving on here, of course, their off-grid logo, and then it just says D2 on this side, so that's fine. We have the show side pivots. Yeah, the two heads back here. You can switch the pocket clip over to this side for uh, left-handed carry, which actually works. Most lefties, I think, will agree 
right-handed liner locks, as long as they're done correctly with plentiful cutouts, are pretty easy to manipulate. So it's, you're not missing out on much. I understand it'd be better if you had your own, right? Left-handed liner lock would be preferable, but this is still pretty easy to manipulate with my left hand. I think most, most lefties will probably say the same. A uh, little backspacer back here. Uh, liners are fully lipped. They come all the way out to the outside. Nice jimping back here. I don't really have a problem with this area at all. Hey, look at that. There's no lanyard thing. Oh no. <laughs> no lanyard, what do we get? Moving on here, the pocket clip is in a fantastic position. Optimal position, it has nothing to compete with, right? Uh, so you can see we've got the screws recessed in uh, to the pocket clip, and the pocket clip is recessed into the frame, and it's fully deep carry. Like I said earlier, drop, spoon shape, perfect. This is, this is a superb pocket clip. I have no complaints with that pocket clip. It's just, it's just great. What a great pocket clip. This is a good knife. So, I mean, here's the thing. Not gonna be legal for everybody because of the blade length. Uh, uh, Right-handed liner lock, that's a small complaint. The, um, the overall nature of the knife is outdoor, perhaps harder use. The tip isn't, because of this, this aggressive um, clip point, the tip is not going to be particularly robust, but it will cut and slice. It'll be fine if you use it like a knife, right? Um, it's going to be uh, too heavy for some people. Some people, you know, if you're big into ratios, right, the balance on this thing is right about where it should be. It's a little butt heavy. It's about right. Get it to balance. There's the balance right there, right? So, uh, yeah, it, I mean, I suppose it could be lighter. You know, they nested the liners, maybe made the G10 scales a little thinner, right? Maybe you could get it down to about where the pair of three is, but is it absurd? No. Um, I think a lot of people will find that this is a really comfortable knife. In fact, this is pretty straightforward. It feels a lot like what we've experienced in the budget territory with a little bit more, they just feel a little more solid. Anybody in the comment section, if you've ever handled one of these knives from Off Grid, they just feel like a step up from Civivi, right? In solidity and not that Civivi or CGRB or QSP do a bad job. These just feel a little bit tighter, a little bit more, I don't know. It's, it's tightness mixed with solidity. Like the integrity feels like it's a little more, right? It's a lot of people are going, well, that's the extra ounce that you're holding. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what it is. They just, the quality really feels like it's there. Now, on the flip side of that though, this is still pretty expensive for what it is. Just like the XL Enforcer, it's 80 bucks. Uh, if this was in 154 CM, I'd say, yeah, no problem, take my money. Uh, maybe I'm biased, but I really like 154 CM. I think 154 CM, 14 C, 28 N are probably the very best sub $100 steals that you can get right now. And I've talked with the owner of off-grid knives about that. D2 is okay. But I don't think this knife should have been more than about 60 bucks, uh, maybe 65. Switch out this steel with one of those uh, other ones that I mentioned, right? And I think um, I'm way more comfortable spending 80 to $85 on something like that. Like I said, quality build, quality grind, fit and finish is excellent. The consistency with these off-grid knives is just, it's always great. They look like they're gonna be tactical, and then you get them and you're like, oh no, every last line is well thought out. The peel ply texturing is perfect. It's right that in between sort of, not gonna readily fray up your pants, but still gonna create enough grippage that it feels good. We didn't even talk about the edges here. Everything is always nicely knocked down. It just feels good. It's welcoming to the hand, but you're locked in. You're not gonna come, you're not gonna come off of this knife because of the way that this is shaped, right? But it's not, forcing you into any one area. You're not like, oh, you can't move back because we have a special place for your hand. No, if you need to choke back a little bit, it's fine because these are all, it's all rounded, right? These are great. I don't, with off-grid knives, the way that they feel, they do feel a step up. So I, I don't necessarily want their prices to come down. I want this, I want the standard steel to be something that's more acceptable in the territory because these, they've kind of carved out their own special little spot in my mind in the knife world, right? And we just need, you know, the designs, as far as I know, from what I've experienced, the designs are always gonna be good. I expect that, right? The little details, like the pocket clip and the size of the hardware, right? The chamfering, uh, blade profiles and stuff like that. Action, detent, all that stuff's gonna be good. I'm happy with that. 
excuse me. It's all great. I just want I want to I want I, I want the steel to bring the knife up to you know where the price is. Uh, so good. Price isn't crazy. It's just high, right? How many reviews have I ended going? Great knife. About twenty dollars. About twenty bucks too high. Everything in this planet could be $20 less and I'd be $20 happier, but it's not. Uh, can I recommend this knife? Yeah, it's got a lot of competition. This is a good design, not an insane, right? I mean, an extra 20 bucks is gonna break very few people's bank, right? But if it's out of your budget, you do. There, this knife does have a lot of competition. In fact, arguably it has the most competition, right? That's what I mean. It's like, if they wanna stay up there around 80 bucks, it's gotta be bringing something special to the table. And I think that's, maybe it's just me, but I think that $80 price tag, that territory, that exact spot is kind of unruled territory right now. There are a few good knives around 80 bucks that are like exceptional. People are like, oh, there's a whole bunch of knives at the $80 price. Yeah, but exceptional designs. I think this could be, you, this and 154 for 80, 85 bucks, man, that'd be sick. Um, yeah, so that's how I feel about that. Recommendable. It's not quite a budget knife because the line is cut off at 75 bucks. So this will be going into my recommended knives playlist, but just remember, it's high. There's a lot of competition. So if it's outside of your budget, there's no reason to spend the extra $20 on this. There's a lot of other stuff out there, but this is still a good design. Okay, guys, I think that's gonna be pretty much it uh, for today's video. Thanks again to Off Grid Knives for letting me take a look at this. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.